introduce our guest for today. I'm going to be doing a series of video interviews with people who are on healing journeys, kind of like I have been for the past couple of years. So Jennifer and I connected over, uh, I think, a support group uh, on on uh, Facebook. So uh, we this is actually our first conversation with each other. And you guys are here to witness because she has a incredible story of healing to tell. And I, I'm excited to hear it too. So, all right, Jennifer, tell us a little about yourself. Okay. Um, I'm, I just recently turned 48 years old. I am originally from Tucson, Arizona and spent 22 years there and then moved to California, spent the last um, 20 years of my time in the United States in San Francisco and Oakland. And uh, for the last two years, I've been living in Guatemala. I live in a small village called San Pedro, La Laguna on Lago Atitlan. And the year before we moved here, uh, my husband and son and I traveled together um, for uh, in, in a few different countries. Um, That's so exciting. How old your son? He's five. He just turned five. Oh my gosh, how wonderful. He's already seen the world. Yeah, he has. He has. He's, he's, he left when he had, I think, just turned two or just before his second birthday. So, wow. So, what took you to Guatemala? That's exciting. Yeah. Um, actually, my ex boyfriend's wedding. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. I'm still a good friend. And, um, and this town I lived in back in 2007, 2008. And, still have community here and we were tired of traveling around we were ready to settle down somewhere and uh we came for this wedding and decided that san pedro checked off all the boxes of the things that we were wanting for now in our lives um one of the main things uh is an abundance of fruit and vegetables and we can access some organic here um, some of it is not, and it's hard to tell sometimes, um, if it is or not, unless, I mean, you know, if it's absolutely perfect and massive, then we try to avoid that. But, um, yeah, it's, and the, the climate here is lovely and it's a slower pace, a simple life. And I was, my health was in really bad shape at that point. Um, I think I sustained a bit through our travels, the year of traveling, but um, was really looking for a place to settle down somewhere and do some things consistently. Some of the protocols of medical medium, like the cell reduce every day. Um, I was dabbling in that a little bit while we were traveling because I had just found out about medical medium around that time. And so, um, but, you know, I wasn't consistent by any means and really ready to start feeling better my health was just slowly declining what what, what exactly was going on so i i believe i inherited quite a bit of um heavy metals in my system from my mom my mom my, my mom's side of the family possibly my dad's as well you know who knows um but i had digestive issues sinus issues most of my life digestion wasn't too bad but um I also didn't pay that close attention to it I was um generally healthy but then I attempt my husband and I tried to get pregnant and it took a couple of years and knowing what I know now about my body I think I think my son is a miracle it's a miracle that he um was conceived it took a couple of years and I was really trying a lot of different things um, on a spiritual level, um, clearing of some things, old things, uh, and trying to be what I thought was healthy. Uh, but at that point in my life, I was hardcore nourishing traditions um, um, at Weston Price kind of diet, which is a lot of fat, a lot of eggs, a lot, a lot of... Um, things that bone broth, you know, things that yep. we now 
no, um, are not helpful. And I, you know, I think that all of that contributed to me not having a really hard time getting pregnant. I then at 34, 35 weeks, um, was diagnosed with preeclampsia. We were looking forward to a home birth and my midwife said that I showed some signs of that and we should go to the hospital and rule it out. And instead it was ruled in and I was um, admitted and immediately put on Pitocin um, to induce the labor and magnesium IV to uh, address the high blood pressure. And they worked against each other. So I was in labor for four and a half days at a really complicated hospital birth that ended up with a, an emergency C-section um, because I swelled. I think my whole body was slowly swelling until I had some brain swelling. I started to um, hallucinate. And uh, among other, like, so there were some other serious things happening to my body while I was in the hospital. And I had a uterine infection, for example, as well, an infection in my uterus. And so um, I had a lot of antibiotics. They were, they were feeding me so many antibiotics, everything except penicillin because nothing was working. So um, my temperature kept going up. The, um, they kept, they were monitoring the baby closely, but anyway, it was, it all came to a head, had an emergency C-section, was still in the hospital for another five days. And my son was um, small because he was a month early. And uh, yeah, they wanted me to also, I would, my milk wasn't totally coming in. And so they wouldn't let me bring in breast milk, um, supplemented with other people's breast milk. I wanted formula. So uh, we actually smuggled in a friend's breast milk. <laughs> Wow. Um, it was a it was a really traumatic experience for me on yeah. a lot of levels, physically, Sounds spiritually. Like about the worst case much. scenario. That's I'm so sorry you had to go through all that. Yeah. That sounds thank you. thank you. And thank you for rough. saying that. A lot of people like to end when I tell them this story. Um, well, at least your baby is healthy. And um, it's true. My son is healthy, but it's it really takes like, a toll on to your body. And seen. Yeah. And the story didn't end there. So my health was in really bad shape after that. Um, that was like uh, a cliff that I, that my body just kind of went over. After and all the first like medical, medical medium medical. talks about that, you know, how um, the adrenaline during yeah. childbirth takes yeah. such a toll because it, it like completely zaps our immune system. And then like all yeah. of the viruses that are already in there have totally party they have a headache because you're They're not having a headache because i think i've had ebv for a long time sure. shingles um strep for sure strep as well um and and then i had all those antibiotics and um i had an epidural didn't end up working but you know they did that yeah. anyway um Poor thing. and yeah and so and then yeah the pitocin and magnesium and all these other things i um what was i gonna say though i had um, all of these interventions and, and, and my, the way that I was trying to heal myself before, you know, really, I realized was not working like the, um, the high fat, high protein, um, diet. And my midwife was, you know, telling me eat as many eggs as you can. At this point, I still didn't know. Um, so I was doing the things that were advised were recommended to me like that and still getting sicker and sicker. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest clues for me was after the year and a half that followed the birth of my son, I was angry. I was so pissed off all the time. I was so easily annoyed, triggered, bitter, resentful, angry. Um, and that wasn't me. Like not only was I feeling horrible in my body, low energy, horrible digestion. Like I just was in pain all the time physically. Um, but I was angry all the time and that, and I'm usually, normally I've been a positive person, energetic as well, obviously, but, um, but really positive. And so I, I realized that something had to be done that I was not myself and it felt physiological. It felt like it was something other than depression and anxiety, which I had also been experiencing severely since the birth of my son. Um, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't like 
I was just in a bad mental state because of the traumatic birth. I was, something was going on in my body. Chemically. Good for you to, to recognize that. Yeah. Um, so my sister mentioned medical medium to me at one point. I, I also went through something that I, uh, I regret. My family was really worried about me. They thought maybe I had a brain tumor or something like that. And, um, and with the privilege of having my mom pay for this, she, um, we, I went to the Amen Clinic, which is a, a clinic in Los Angeles. And they have a few clinics actually, but um, they study, they look at the brain um, and brain trauma at, with athletes or people who've been in severe accidents. Um, and, and they look at, um, with x-rays, um, the holes in the brain, they look at the brain. So I went through this procedure and I was, it was just before my son's second birthday. I'd agreed to this because I was experiencing, um, yeah, these, all these symptoms, but you know, they were getting worse. So the, on the way to the doctor, I've, I scheduled a flight, went there on the way I'm realizing I'm nursing my son. Cause I was able to eventually nurse a little bit and never did get enough milk to fully nurse him. I had to supplement, I was eating no fruits. I was eating none of the things that medical medium recommends now, if only I had known. Yes. Um, but I, um, all, I call the doctor, I realize, and, and I ask him, I'm nursing my son. Um, how do you take the x-ray? What do I need to know? She said, yeah, we're gonna um, inject you with a radioactive isotope um, two days in a row. So you're going to um, need to stop the nursing for at least 72 hours. <laughs> um, wow. And I knew at that point, um, he was almost two. And so I was, I had been looking for trying to figure out reading lots of things about how to wean anyway, but I had to go cold turkey um, with um, stopping the nursing. And that was a bit hard and traumatic for both of us. And, um, and then had this injected and, you know, probably made things as we know now a lot worse as well. And it wasn't that helpful. They, they prescribed me Ativan. Um, I, yeah, I think it was, Ativ is it Ativan? That's an upper, it's a, it's a stimulant. Is that what they use or is that Adderall? I, I don't Adderall. Know. I don't they prescribed me Ad uh, Adderall. They prescribed Adderall to me. Oh my which gosh. Is a, a, ADHD a very, that they use. Yeah, they, so they decided from my scan that I have a type of, out of the seven types they think of, are there uh, one of the types of ADHD. Mm -hmm. So they prescribed me Adderall with yoga. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was, I think the last, the last straw. And, um, and we were in the middle of renovating the condo that we moved, that we bought to, um, to rent out so that we could um, travel and I was triggered also, I think, with mold because there was mold in the cabinets that we replaced in the walls and stuff. So there were there were a, a, a myriad of things happening. And then my sister told me about medical medium. I tried to do a few things. Um, about four months into our trip, I think I started to try to do cell reduce once in a while, but um, it this was like also three about, years ago. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. And then about. And then around that time, also my husband and I became vegan. We decided okay. to make the choice to be vegan. Mm -hmm. um, and so started doing no foods um, a little bit. Like I, I still was eating some gluten and, um, and vinegar and still struggle with that sometimes to be honest. Sure. Um, so I, when I, you say you did some no foods, you mean you took them out? Started to take them out, yeah. Yes. And start to read more um on his website and and it was about a year later that i discovered some facebook groups that were support groups for medical medium followers um and that's that around that time and then around the time that we moved here um i really started doing it more consistently i had a crappy blender here that i was using and mm -hmm. straining the celery in every day and that was just so labor intensive and we also have, um, don't have easy access to clean. I mean, it's easy-ish now, clean water. Um, we get Garifones delivered to us now um, of water that um, I then actually ozonate with, or I ozonate to do an extra because I'm not sure about 
um, the cleanliness and the purification process of the water that we get. So, uh -huh. and I, uh, the, the easiest thing I can do here in this, where I am right now in this small village is um, I have a little ozonator machine and I just put that into the water and I'm not sure if it's killing everything. It might be killing everything, which is better for me than actually <clears throat> um, not having this sure. cleansing process. So I do the um, enlivening the water with that I drink with ginger and lime and things like that. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, we don't get lemons here. We have limes. Oh, okay. so, it works. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, really started... And then in October, a year and a half ago, we got a, a juicer. I had my husband bring a juicer from the States. Nice. So consistently celery juice, celery juice 99% of the time um, with the juicer every day. So what is your, like, okay, when you first started the protocols, like what did your day, your day of food look like, for instance? Um, yeah, so more just a, a lot of fruits and vegetables. I steam potatoes. Um, I wasn't steaming, I was roasting at first because we didn't have a steamer situation. And um, the challenge being here in this small town in Guatemala has been slowly gathering, um, acquiring the tools, the things that can make this life more efficient and um, easier mm -hmm. in general. Is it hard so to get it delivered like? it's hard to get things here. So mm -hmm. um, fortunately, yeah, if I ever can't get celery, then um, then I'm not doing the celery just that day, but that's maybe one in 15 times. Mm -hmm. um, and or 15 to 20 times, there's no person that has it at their fruit and veggie stand. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, but the trade-off is I get amazing fruits here for cheap, like we get papayas, gorgeous, papayas for 15 kitsalas, which is $2. Oh, um, nice. And lots of, and there's a dragon fruit season. It hasn't happened um, yet this year, but we get beautiful dragon fruit. We get lots of mangoes, um, you know, and these things in the States are super expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I, I eat a lot of, you asked what I, what I started with. I think it was just more, um, following i i started to do a lot of his recipes mm -hmm. um from his website and experimented a lot you know he started eating a lot more potatoes and eating a lot more fruit in general because i had been avoiding those things my whole life yeah um because you know it's the wrong kind of it's sugar so right. i know we, we yeah. all have fallen trapped to that and it's yeah like, oh. and that was the biggest one i think was just i incorporated a ton of honey, potatoes, fruit, a lot of the natural sugars into my diet. No longer did I um, limit those things. Yes. And yeah. what about leafy greens? And so, did you have about an leafy greens? Yeah. So um, what did, would you say started the healing first? My digestion. Mm -hmm. Same um, here. Yeah. That was where I saw the biggest difference first. And I, and it actually took me a minute when I realized wow, I haven't been in pain in a few days. And um, yeah, and my bowel movements are more normal. And mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say that celery juice was like a, an important part of that? Huge. Recovery? Part. Yeah. A huge part of that. Because I think, to be honest, that's the thing I've been most consistent with mm -hmm. um, in the last two years is the celery juice. I've, you know, I've had some um, gluten or I've had some vinegar and, you know, and yeah. a lot of it, a lot of the times it's eating at a friend's house or something and, and I'm yeah. so hungry and there's nothing else to eat and they've made yeah. a salad the dressings already on there. And right. um, you do what you can. Yeah, sometimes I'm not prepared, you know, yeah. I try to be prepared for these events, but um, true. Yeah. I think planning is like the saving grace for success yeah. on, on doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And Oh my God, we are warriors. I feel like, you know, <laughs> just the amount of work, effort, time, energy, we're in the kitchen. Yep. Preparing these things. Um, yep. It's so, so much. It is a and lot. It really bears on us sometimes. I mean, it's, it can. I'm having conversations with you guys and the Facebook groups all the time in my head and thinking, I'm going <laughs> to write this question or post this thing that is on my mind. And 
a lot of times I don't, but it just knowing there are other people there yeah. going through the same stuff is just really comforting. Yeah. Well, that's why also I wanted to do these interviews, these, yeah. these healing stories, because when I was in the kitchen all day long, I would just listen to like YouTube channels or the radio show from medical medium or what, whoever was talking about healing. Yeah. I just yeah. like constantly fed my brain that positive reinforcement as well as the food to yeah. help heal my body. So yeah. that was a huge, important part of keeping going for me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I feel like, I don't know about you, but like, I almost, um, enjoy hearing other people talk about this information sometimes a little more than even hearing it straight from Anthony William, because sometimes I can relate to what they're saying and understand it in a different way. Yeah. The way they phrase it or say yeah. it, yeah. it speaks to me in a slightly different way, you know? So that's why I, I think these are important to do, you know, for, for people sure. to know oh, what's God, what. Sure, because it's also when we are, when we do dip back, dip, dip back down or um, have a relapse, you know, we have these doubts come into our mind and it's mm -hmm. natural, but hearing people's stories really does help because it's yep. sometimes I, you know, I go to these places like, well, um, and a lot of it I know is I realize is influenced from what I think other people would think if yep. I told everybody that I was um, following a medium <laughs> for my health issues now um, and that I don't no, I no longer trust science. Um, they, right. it, a lot of people I know would think I have lost my mind, but when I hear other people's stories, it really puts me back on track. Right. So tell me how you reconciled that. Cause, um, I, I, you know, we all have our I'm own way of getting there. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't talk about it very much. Uh, yeah. I share with only my closest friends and I, um, yeah, I just don't talk about it very much. I have a, I, I do human design interpretations, chart interpretations. I don't know if you know what that is. No, tell me. But, um, well, it's a, it's a, it's also woo woo. <laughs> hey. Um, something that it was downloaded to somebody. Um, and it's based on a few different systems that are already out there, like the I Ching, Vedic and Western astrology and um, Kabbalah system and, to name a few, but wow. it's basically like an astrology reading. Okay. It's based on your birth information, time, date, location, where you were born. And um, there are centers. We have so many centers in our body and, and I have, and they're defined or open, meaning they're, <clears throat> if it's if this, like my throat center is open, which means in this particular center, because it's open, I take in other people's energy. I'm easily influenced in this way. Um, and, um, and if I have a closed throat, then I'm, that's energy I'm putting out into the world. So if I have a closed throat, I usually am a, a solid speaker. I, I feel confident in what I'm saying in groups. Um, my throat is open. So I think it, it, it feels true to me as well in my life. Like there's some things about human design that are like, wow, that feels so wow. right. I want to hear um, more about and this that. Is that's one. So cool. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So so you're a practitioner? And, um, I I can interpret charts. Okay. Um, I'm I, I I do a few different things. I'm a meditation teacher, uh, a certified meditation teacher, and I've I've done health and uh, nutrition coaching, life some like mindfulness coaching for people as well. How fascinating! Um, Have you is this coaching. been for a long time, or was was it in tandem with your healing journey, or well, how that? Work? I've been obsessed with healing, na natural, holistic healing and health for about twenty years. Um, and in two thousand ten, I I got my first certification <clears throat> to be a health coach. Um, and have, was before I had my son, was experimenting with a lot of different diets with my own body, a lot of different um, healing modalities. Mm -hmm. holistic health modalities as well yes yeah That's so I've, I've been in this in this field i've played around for a long time and nothing 
nothing has worked like medical medium. No, nothing even comes close. I always still had so many doubts and questions. What is the root cause of this? How, how do we know? Who do we trust? Um, yes. You know, this it always thing. like got me about the autoimmune theories is like, yeah. okay, so you're fine, fine, fine. And then all of a sudden your genes are faulty. Like they, or in, and then your body starts attacking itself. It's right. so strange. Like right. why, Innately, that always felt wrong to me. Why we all accept that is like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't think yeah. so. No, it doesn't. And so not only experimenting with my own body, but instinctively all of the medical medium stuff feels Right. And it's also stuff that I, some of the things that I've also already, you know, come to on my own yes. um, that are not mainstream, you know, that people would think I was crazy for, but I already thought some of these things by myself anyway. Right. Um, and, and there's just so many things that hit home. Do you remember back in your history? I, I mean, I don't know about you, but like I never considered myself a chronically ill person until I got chronically ill, like a, you know, in a huge way about three years ago, even though I had always had symptoms and had things going wrong. Totally. Yeah. Um, but I know distinctly when I got mono the first time for, you know, and which is of course Epstein Barr. Yeah. Um, but do you, do you have a distinct memory of that as well? Or were you one of the people who don't recall having it, but I'm sure do have it? No, I don't actually recall having it. Um, I was sick a lot in my youth. Yeah, what kind of I things? Were you? As well, um, a lot of it was um, strep stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. Strep throat and sinus issues mm -hmm. um, that would bring my energy levels down. Um, yep. Yeah. So a lot of allergies and stuff? Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. A lot ear, of did you get like ear infections constantly or sinus infections? I did when I was a kid. I uh -huh. had them constantly. Me my too. mom, my mom ended up telling me that I had, um, she couldn't even count how many times I had ear infections and mm -hmm. antibiotics prescribed to me before I was six months old. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. That's even. Whew. Yeah. The fact that she couldn't even count. I don't know. That was wild. Um, so yeah, I don't know exactly. Yeah, so you were primed. Major, oh, I had a major, um, there's been some things in my life. One was um, when I was a school counselor and I was, I had a 30 years old and I was uh, at the end of the school day, saw a couple hives come up on my face on each cheek. And then my face swelled up um, and I was unrecognizable. I had to call a, a roommate to take me to the ER. Wow. And, um, you know, they put um, steroids, injected me with steroids to handle that. And then I was on like Benadryl for a couple of days till that stopped working. Um, but that was some, you know, that was one of the times in my life that I remember having something that was questionable. Nobody knew what it was from. Right. Do you, yeah. thinking back now, do you, can you identify maybe what triggered that? I can't specifically because there were a few things mm -hmm. uh, that happened around that time. But, but I will tell you this, I had the school cafeteria lunch that day. I usually brought my own lunch, Ooh. Um, but I did have the, the fried chicken. And I remember that, so it, but I don't remember what else was on the plate. Right. Um, wow. Uh-huh. And normally didn't do that. Wow. Never did that actually before. Um, so never again. <laughs> Uh huh. Exactly. Oh gosh, it's so interesting. Of course, we know all those like anaphylactic type reactions are yeah. just your liver so congested that you can't yeah. handle another thing that it their body perceives as an invader or something. Yeah. Negative. It's like to the brink. So yeah. it, it's like you're chock full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I was um pregnant, my my naturopaths said that my liver, the levels showing that my liver were off were, were high. They were, it was, it was abnormal. She, and she kept asking me, are you sure you're not drinking any alcohol? And <laughs> I was not drinking alcohol, but you know, things were off and it was, she couldn't explain it. She couldn't figure out why my liver was 
showing that it was messed up. Um, you know, and then after I had my baby, she was prescribing me undas, which are, um, they're like alcohol-based homeopathics. Oh. Um, and I, you know, I was taking those for a little while, but every time I took it, it felt so wrong because it just, I mean, the, the, the amount of alcohol in it was burned. almost pure. Like, yeah. yeah. That's um, yeah. So here I am after the birth of my son doing more things that were. Do you, you know, have um, you ever thought to like take medical medium books to those practitioners or to enlighten them? Have you tried that? I did tell my naturopath that this is what I've been doing. And this is actually the, been helping me more than ever um but it was it was a call that wasn't really between us it was I was with my mother-in-law and she was with her and so it was a brief thing brief interaction uh -huh. but um yeah I and I didn't actually see a doctor for a while before that so I don't have diagnoses yeah uh, I, I I've diagnosed myself or, yeah. or health of things that I've had based on symptoms and book based yeah. on what other people would um i think think that i have yeah um, i didn't go through the whole diagnostic thing either just because let the end of that like okay so you can get a spinal you know for all my neurological you can get a spinal tap an mri you know yeah. all of this blood work and what are you offering me at the end i mean what's all the, yeah what's the information like something uh, that they had offered me was a shot of Botox into my throat so, to make these muscles calm down so they wouldn't spasm so much that when I was having such difficulty speaking, wow. I'm like, you know, shooting more poison in there. I mean, Botox is <laughs> food poisoning and wow. I can't see how that's going to help me. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, no, in, or, you know, immunosuppressant drugs. I'm like, don't I need How is that I'm helpful? Like, suppressing I know it's yeah. so, so strange. So yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I had a functional neurologist that thought um, I perhaps had gain barre, which is a neurological disease. And there's like even a lawsuit against um, the makers of the flu shot. Um, and yeah, yeah. with that, and, and that was one of the things that I felt contributed to my, you know, my overall like decline. It was yeah. one of, you know, say five things or whatever. I was similar to right. you. Like I had, I was on a keto diet. Um, yeah. anyway, so, you know, it's, it's like so many of our stories are the same story because yeah. I see so many, I mean, you, your, yours and mine is so many similarities as I'm listening to you tell your story. I'm like, and of course I did, I was over the counter drug central for all of my that digestive stuff. I was, I took Zantac twice a day for my yeah. sinus and my allergy stuff. I took um, Zyrtec and Flonase and Mucinex and Tylenol Sinus. And I mean, I was like, and then because of my sleep problems, I was taking NyQuil every night. And it was like, oh, yeah, I yeah. mean, what did I do to myself? Because we know all of those have metals in them, have petroleum products, they have, yeah, yeah. It's like, but yeah. we just didn't know. And so that's the thing that hopefully these these conversations will at least get people wondering. Yeah. Curious. If, if they didn't it's already know curiosity. that. <laughs> yeah. It starts with curiosity and, and then it's, and then how, how, how much are you going to put up with as far as um, your life um, being able to function, being um, things. Yes. I was non-functional. I, I had hit the yeah. wall. So I don't yeah. know if you, if you kind of, it seems like you may have felt that same I hit a wall. My husband was working away a week on week off schedule where he was literally gone for a week and then home for a week. Um, and we had, you know, a newborn baby and I was, I was losing my mind and, um, and not functioning well at all, but it's really tough pretending as hard as I could. Yes. Well, you don't want to admit it because it's, no. it's like people will judge you for being but weak even or Exactly. But also even, um, for my baby, like just, um, make 
just mustering up the energy to get through the day with him and trying to put on you know get up some energy to um to have a smile for him and play with him and um yeah because i didn't have child care so i was with him 24 7 and um it was just taking its toll wow yeah well, look how strong you are now you did the hardest thing that there is to do it's like i feel like now that i've healed um so much doing all of the the tasks of making the food or you know doing the prep is like so much easier because like I feel well to do it the energy yeah yes before yeah. it was like it, it, I look back on it and I sometimes I'm like a how did I have faith that I would that this was my road this was the path that was going to heal me I knew from the start it was it yeah. um even though there was very little proof on the outside and, you know, I still was seeming quite ill. Yeah. Um, and just having the, the wherewithal to stay the course and yeah. then also the wherewithal to spend the hours that I did. Cause I, you know, I, I had two daughters at home and a husband. And of course I, wasn't so adamant that this was the way that I, I brought them on board too. So I would make it for all four of us. So, you know, four times celery juice, four times, whatever, you know, I was making, which I was like, I was committed. Yeah. And they're (laughs) willing to do it with you. They, yes, absolutely. And they all have. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and how about your husband? Is he on yeah, board as he's well? Yeah, on board, which is, I'm so grateful because I read some posts from people who have partners that are not supportive or, you know, not only not on board, but not supportive. And that's right. Hard. It's um, double the battle because you're yeah. like already hard to fight yourself to get to do it and you're ill and you're not feeling well and you're yeah. hoping and you're praying oh that this God, is the right yeah. answer. And then to have the negative talk and- right, right. I was, and I, I, that's really, that's gotta be so hard. I, um, I was going to say another reason why I don't always talk or openly easily talk about this. My, um, following medical medium is because I, I haven't been super strict, so I'm not fully healed from everything yet. So I feel like part of me, I I have split energy sometimes with that. Like I want to, I want to share so much so often, but, um, but one, because I'm going to be perceived as crazy, kind of gets in the way sometimes. And two, because I'm not, I can't show like, look at me now. Um, yes, you can though. I, I mean, I, like, well, I guess, I guess, I guess maybe this is where I need um, some support with um, fellow um, yes. followers because I have, I don't, I'm not depressed anymore. I don't have anxiety. Um, I don't have the digestive issues I had. I mean, um, that's huge. Had, Think of the people better. that suffer with that, that are, would be like, give anything to be healed of those things. It's true. More energy. To, yeah. So I, I am grateful to you for doing this and doing oh, these videos. Oh, good. Well, thank you for being willing. I mean, that, I know it's very vulnerable to talk about this like openly and it's like, yeah. I, I get it. So um, yeah. I, I admire your courage to do it and I appreciate it so much. You're my first one. So oh, yay. <laughs> I'm like, I know it's kind of ironic. So um, yeah, yeah. I am, you know, very grateful. And, um, you know, I just know you're going to help somebody. You know what I mean? Your story is going to resonate with someone who has experienced some of the same stuff. And yeah. it, the thing is, is that this, this is a marathon. This isn't a sprint. It's and, true. you know, I was 50, maybe, yeah, 50 and a half, I think, when I first started, like, going over the cliff. Okay. Um, and then that was, like, when I started going over the cliff and, and I, for about a year and a half. And then I fully went over the cliff before I found medical medium. Yeah. Um, and then, honestly even after starting medical medium, I further went down the cliff because, you know, you can't turn the Titanic around. You're already on a trajectory of illness and you already have all these toxins in your body. And so you can only get rid of them so quickly because you can't release them all 
because otherwise you would die. If your yeah. liver went, okay, cool. Let's get rid of all these at yeah. once you'd be dead. So yeah. it has to parcel them out little by little so that you can eliminate them. Hopefully. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Because you know, and that's the thing about, you know, people are we're brainwashed to think a pill is going to solve it. Totally. And so in, you know, we're sort of in an instant gratification society now too, with social media, with everything at our Google, yeah. at our fingertips, whatever we want to know. Yeah. And what people don't may not realize is that you spend, well, A, you could be born with umpteen toxins and Even viruses inherited. in your body Yeah. from the get-go, but as a baby. Yeah. And then of course, daily life. And we've already discussed so many of the pitfalls that we we fell into 20, so, 30, 40, 50 years, you're doing these things. Yes. So yes, they don't overnight. go no. out overnight. And so yeah. I think like you're, you have a lot of healing that you are revealing <laughs> just in the name of my channel. So, you know, anyway, <laughs> I love it. yeah, yeah. Thing. Well, and, and also like when you're cleaning your house or reorganizing, you're going to have a pile of crap in the middle of the room it's gonna get messy before correct and you got to get that garbage out before you can start sweeping the floor because yeah. i mean you can't even get to the floor yeah yeah so you move the trash yeah. out of the way i had i was having stomach cramps this morning and I, all i had had i didn't have my celery juice because i had a women's group that i facilitate and i you know i need to go to the bathroom about four or five times for about three hours afterwards. So, so there are right. I get that occasion. You know, there's this. Yeah, if it's at a, if it's in in the morning, I I don't schedule things in the morning usually for this reason. Yes, um, yes. Because I still need to use the bathroom. How much celery so, juice do you drink? I'm doing 32 ounces now. About mm -hmm. a month ago, I upped it to 32 ounces in the morning, and uh, and I noticed. So I've gone off of celery juice for a couple weeks, a couple of times since I was doing it consistently. Mm -hmm. um, and it was usually right around the time that I, I stopped needing to go to the bathroom for if I, before, you know, like I TMI, but diarrhea f three or four times um, for about five, six months. Uh -huh. And then get, then it gets normal. Then my, then it's normalized, regulated. Um, mm -hmm. And my bowel movements are totally fine, normal. Um, but if I go off the protocol, if I go off the celery juice for a couple of weeks, which I did, I've done a lot of this, these experiments yep. um, because of life circumstances also, but yeah, sure. go off, go back on. And then it's another four or five, six months of diarrhea in the morning, three or four times. That's um, interesting. And the body's doing the die off of all the pathogens and, yep. and processing all the things that I, you know, was exposing myself to yeah. and all the, all the stuff we're inadvertently exposed to, but um, right. It's, it's interesting to, to be your own human experiment and watch these things happen. And I so totally my, agree. Yeah, my morning uh, um, stomach ache, I had just, I had a lemon, the lemon honey water, and then I had watermelon is all. And I, <sighs> and I think somebody would easily think, oh man, that it's the watermelon that was upsetting. I can't eat watermelon right now, but it, I think, no, it's actually something else in my system that I've eaten in the last few days or or some toxin releasing or whatever. Right. Um, watermelon know? is very detoxifying. Very and detoxifying. So a lot of people so, have a reaction to watermelon. They get bloated or whatever, yeah. be, but it's not the watermelon. It's the, the watermelon. it's the bugs in there that the watermelon's like kicking out. Exactly. Yeah. So we have to remember those things. And, and that's I where, again, I think, again, um, the Facebook groups, support groups have been really helpful with these reminders and, um, it's one thing to read his books or listen to his podcasts, but it's another thing to hear from other people, their experiences. Right. Do you have a favorite book? Where did you start? Which did you start with the original book? I did start with the original book. Um, one of my favorites is liver cleanse or uh, liver rescue. Yes. Because I feel like it's more approachable or, and accessible or less woo woo than the others in some, in some ways. Um, yep. but I, but I just, I, I just, I feel it also just so resonates with me. Um, and then I really love life changing foods. I love the spiritual, yes. um, points that he makes with the, um, each, each food. Yes, and I agree. I, yeah, I, I refer to that thing all the time. 
Me too. And uh, but it, but I don't like the way it's organized. I wish there was um. But what I like yes, about cleanse the heal is index. Kind of, yeah, the index, and in cleanse the heal, he has the um the ailments or the you know the mystery diagnosis of uh, the the protocol. So cleanse the heal. I know. I I can't tell you how many times I've like gone. Okay, so strep. Then I go to page one, page two. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I have to look at all the like the, what I are the know. foods that help. I'm really hoping for, if he ever watches this, a book on women, uh, for women, about women, and um, and all the issues around women with um, yep, birth, horm- yep. you know, labor, yeah, hormones. hormones, yeah, like all of our um, problems. Yeah. We're we're taught that the the problems are hormone hormonal, yeah, and of course we know it's not hormones; it's liver issues. Yeah. And I'm I mean, so fired up about his the things that he brings up about how women are being kept down deliberately. And I, something I've always felt as well, you know, how oppressed we are uh, yep. in general He's, as a gender. He is a very big advocate for women. He is yeah. he is the spokesperson for those without a voice. So yeah. I mean, it is it is amazing. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, what would you say? Okay, so did you make any mistakes you would say oh if i could go back and redo this journey i would do this instead of that um i'm well i'm going through this right now i'm i'm i haven't done a cleanse yet and i'm ready to do a cleanse um and i think if i had been doing cleanses um earlier you know i'd be a little further along in my healing process but i it's also important for me to be patient with myself know that yeah. this is my process and it's there's a reason i haven't done one yet yeah um, well, but i'll let you like i'll rest your mind at ease a little bit because i yeah. dived right into the original 369 like Dude. almost after like i read the book it was like a it was a month into my journey i jumped right into the cleanse wow. and i would not recommend that okay it was and- bad detox and I was so nauseous and so had the worst headache and couldn't sleep a wink and it was it was intense because my body was way congested for that so I mean that see it's funny because you're you're regretting not going aggressive in the beginning I'm regretting going too aggressive in the beginning yeah yeah um, I'm not regretting it but I learned Right. Exactly. I can help my my goal is to help other people avoid doing what I did. Yeah. Because that was a painful way to go. Seems like yours was a lot more of a gentle process. It's been gentle. And 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 now that you say that, I appreciate you sharing that because my husband's away at work for the next two months. So Ooh, that I might would, not be their best time to like do I something be major. Better. Exactly. If mm-hmm. I wait to return, because then he can help with my son and Yes. And I would recommend if I were like, I've never done the mono cleanse, so I don't, I can't really speak I to did, that actually, one. I did, that. I did that for eight days. Well, then the, there you did. So I did, did a cleanse. cleanse. I did a, the banana um, papaya. Interesting. Oh. How was that experience for you? Um, it was, it wasn't bad. My husband did it with me. So that made it easier. And I got pretty bloated. Um, so I think it was working um, right? and I felt a lot better afterwards, but I didn't feel big, significant changes. I, I felt like I, my body, I could have done it a lot longer or um, I would have seen more benefit had I done longer. Um, right. Well, and, and so I, we jumped off of it. <laughs> well, I don't, eight days is pretty good. We did pretty good. I mean, I think good. that we have this sort of misconception that we're going to get done with the cleanse and we're going to immediately know that we're healed this much, this, this, I and this. And I don't, no, that's not, so that's not what it's happens. True. Like, well, and of course my first cleanses, I felt worse like for yeah. a, a little while afterwards for, you know, yeah, each time, okay. like I did it. So then I did, uh, you know, me, I'm like, let's just, let's go all in. And no matter uh-uh. what's happening, let's not read the room at all. Let's just push through no matter what happens. Cause that's, that's smart idea. Uh-huh. So I did it. I did it once a month for five months in a row. My very, like almost my first, like five months of being on this wow. journey. 
So yeah. anyway, it was, it was too much. It was not yeah. advisable. I was so happy when he came out with the, the cleanse to heal um, the simplified three, six, nine yes. in it because, yeah. okay, now we're getting somewhere with more of a gentle cleanse because yeah. when you're super toxic, the more symptoms, you, what people may not realize is the more symptoms you have, that mean that's, that's your body telling you that you are very toxic. You have more toxins than someone without those symptoms. Yeah. So when you are more symptomatic, you can actually do less like abrupt changes, which you would right. think like the more sick you are, the more hardcore you should go. And that's completely opposite of how it, it is in reality. That so, so like the simplified is I, I, when cleanse to heal came out, I did four of those. So that was much more doable because it was, it's other than what I normally would eat. It was, a you know, a lot more apples and a lot more, you know, make sure I got the tea in every night or whatever, but, um, yeah. Yeah. It was, it, it was mostly about just keeping the fat out. So, yeah, okay. so it wasn't the, as much of a huge departure. Like the original three, six, nine is just, it's a lot of salad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, and by the end of it, you're like, wow, my jaw is <laughs> tired of chewing. chewing. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to ask on one of the groups is maybe, or because he talks about the fiber and how we get enough fiber. We don't really need, that's why we juice, juicing's okay and actually better. In fact, right. than, um, you know, liquefying everything in the smooth, in the blender. But um, yeah, man, I, I think sometimes about just, just juicing, like not, um, not chewing so much. <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. But again, that is, that's like again, a that's pretty a detoxifying right. thing. You know, if for your first cleanse, I would be like, right. You know, right. maybe, yeah. you know, you. Yeah. I mean, can you go, you, you did it with the, the mono cleanse, you went fat free for eight days that I know of for sure. Is yeah. that, does it kick up any symptoms for you when you do that? When you go fat free? Um, digestive stuff. Um, yeah. And, and I don't know how to say this, but, um, my bowel movements are different. It's just different. It's yeah. Without so is it like, it pain, like, a, like, like worse, a worse kind of experience? With, I can tell when I'm eating fat. Um, yeah, it's a worse experience going to the bathroom without fat. Uh, with fat, it's worse, you know, and then without fat, when I go fat free, yeah, it's worse for, it's actually also bad for a second, but then it clears up. Okay. Got um, it. So, okay. Then it's, so it's then bad I'm either way. Again. It's, it's pretty bad either way. So yeah, I, but I haven't gone, I don't remember what the eight days about the being fat free, because at that point I didn't know about the um, fat stopping healing. And, um, and I didn't, so I didn't know what to discern what symptoms were because of what, you know, yep, it was yep. because I didn't eat fat or it was because I wasn't eating other thing, other no foods. Yep. Right. Um, yeah. And it was later that I learned about fat. If you consume fat, then you're actually completely halting the healing process. And right. How much so that that's is. an important like thing that you would recommend people know, take note of. Yes. When and starting another thing, this. Another thing I didn't really think I'd learned from him, but was from one of the groups was the no salt. Yeah. You, know, you can eliminate salt. I think I originally found out from that, about that from one of the groups. Uh, that. that was a big one for me too. Um, I, he did mention it in Live Rescue. He did mention it, Okay. but it wasn't like it cleansed to heal spelled it out as like a right. top tier, like level one right. toxin that you want to eliminate. And I, I was like, because uh, I, historically speaking, like I could give up fat even, but I couldn't give up salt. Like salt was hard because also you come to find out too, it, it's a sign of weak adrenals. If you crave salt, it means uh -huh. your adrenal glands are fatigued. So of course mine were, are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still healing. Yeah. Um, but um, that makes it doubly hard. So you're you know, you have that craving and then 
you know, of course, we all know it, it kind of makes the toxins burrow in deeper into your organs instead of letting them go. But I don't know, I still am guilty of a little salt here and there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the thing that we have to, we need to be really gentle with ourselves when we are doing some of these things that um, it's okay because our process is, is it's, it's, it's slow. Forever. It's like I mean, for me, yeah. I'm like, this is my life. This is yeah. how I plan to eat forever. So yeah. like, here it is. Might as well make it, you know, as enjoyable as I can. Although right. I, you know, I am sort of like to that point because I have been doing without fat for the past, you know, yeah. this is day nine for me. Do you, this do you not do salt in the, when you do your cleanses? Correct. Okay. I mean, at first I made that mistake. Okay. I did like, I put salt on stuff like yeah. my salads even when I first yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then at least, yes, by the, yeah, but you, so I'm, you know, I'm sort of like not being completely right about that. The first cleanses I did, I did use salt without realizing yeah. that I was kind of shooting myself in the foot. Yeah. Then the, and those are all this, the original ones. Then when I went to the simplified and did four of those, then I knew that okay. salt was like absolutely a deal breaker. Like I knew salt was not good. I just right. didn't know it. I didn't know what, to what degree Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't good. So yeah. And we're picking up more and more information as we go. Right. I mean, well, I'm still it's thinking, overwhelming. It's overwhelming. There's just so much. And even he still drops little bombs on us in his lives that he's doing every now and then. So I read people's notes that they take on these. Oh, yes. I'm like, oh, wow. That, didn't know that one. That's a new one. Yes. Um, or so just one that I had forgotten. Like, it's like, exactly. Oh, yeah. But I think it's okay. Cause it's, it's like, you're saying like, we're not blasting our bodies with detoxing. If, if we right. knew all this stuff right away, we'd probably do, do what I did and do, yeah. <laughs> do it wrong. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. cool. So like, if you had any advice for someone starting out, what would you say? How would they, what should they do? I, I would tackle one thing at a time. Like really, if you can get into doing celery juice first and mm -hmm. doing that consistently and doing 16 ounces a day, mm -hmm. um, you know, and once you get into the habit of doing that, because these things are really about developing new habits yeah. and releasing old um, beliefs and right. um, belief patterns in your mind, in your yep. brain. Um, and so if you can just start um, acquiring a habit at a time, like yeah. the celery juice and then the heavy metal detox movie, and then the consuming more fruit, being not afraid of fruit. And then, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah. Um, and find at least one person that you can talk to about it, whether it's a person in your life or, um, or find the Facebook groups. Um, yeah, but to get the support, up, open yep. up to other people to get the support. Cause it's, it is really feels lonely. It's isolating. I, it, I agree. 100%. And it's so much work, but it doesn't have to be. I think that's the other part about acquiring a habit slowly mm -hmm. is going slow so that you're not overwhelmed with um, yep. all the work. Yep. I agree. So, I've yeah. like gotten into the habit of, um, batch making stuff so even my salads yeah. I make like six of them at once and I cover yeah. them and then they're ready to go so all I have to do is I do make my dressing fresh every day so I like because I, I like that the orange vinaigrette he has in the liver rescue book yeah 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 which yeah. is like the orange juice I like to put a little lime in there too uh -huh. and then a clove of garlic and then like honey galore like I find for myself replacing the fat with sweet, like the sugar from fruits um, helps. helps me to yeah. really enjoy the salad and like want to eat it. Cause yeah, I yeah. don't know about you, but like just plain lettuce gets a little like, hmm. Can't do it. No, I need the dressing too. Yes. But I, um, wh what do you make your dressing? What machine, what tool do you make your dressing with? Um, it depends on if I'm just being on the quick, like today, I was like, it was my first time I had ever just squeezed the orange directly on the salad. I just did all the ingredients yeah. straight on the salad. I didn't even mix them up. So I just yeah. like, just cut up the orange and squeezed it with my hand. Yeah, yeah. 
sometimes I use my uh, citrus juicer to juice it, but depends what I'm, you know. The garlic though, do you um, use a garlic press or do you? I don't, I just I chop that. it up and yeah. I, I don't mind it chunky. I have a, I have this like new found a, like love for garlic and onions and like I could practice, I feel like Shrek. I could probably pick pick an onion up and like eat it like an <laughs> apple. I love it. Yeah. It's funny. I've, I've, Oh, well, I'm too. asking, yeah, yeah, my, the garlic with my son, he, it, it's too spicy for him. So I want, I'm trying to figure out ways to really blend it well. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, if you put it in the blender or if you, like, I don't know if you have like a high-speed blender or a food processor that would like yeah. almost make it. I have enough liquid in it, then it'll do it pretty well, yeah. Because then I, that would work and he yeah. wouldn't know, be able to detect it much, as yeah. easily, hopefully. Yeah. How's, I mean, does he have any health issues or has he benefited from all of this clean I eating? He's benefiting. Uh, he's such a sweetie. He's really, um, he's remarkably sharp. His memory is incredible. And I think it's, I think it's his diet. I think it's his yeah. medium stuff. Um, he remembers things that you, you I just can't believe. Um, but he drinks celery juice every morning and I make him the heavy metal detox smoothie five out of the seven days a week. Awesome. Wow. Um, that is amazing. Yeah. And we do a lot wow. of simple, I realized for him, cause he's a kid, he's five. So simple, like some cucumber and some tomatoes and some steamed potatoes for dinner. Like we, we usually keep it simple and more raw or sometimes just a big fruit salad with papaya and mango. Yay. Banana he usually eats about three bananas before he goes to bed. Um, wow. That's awesome. You're yeah. doing such a good job. Thanks. How it's wonderful. Hard. So hard being a mom because he's, also got friends' birthday parties and we navigate yes. that. Um, yeah, it's a compromise. Do oh. you let him eat the junk or do you like put your foot sometimes down? Sometimes I don't and sometimes I do. On a, You know, about once every three months or four months, I'll let him, so about twice a year, I'll let him have the cake and the pizza. Well, good. Um, I mean, look. I don't, have... want to I don't want to restrict it either because I was a kid no. and I, don't, right. I want him to be a kid and have those yes. experiences. Exactly. But God, living in Guatemala, the pinatas, the candy, it's like, I really have to be on top of it. And he's, and he's only five now, so I can be on top of it. Right. And, and Will he go to so, a school physically? He goes to a physical, yeah, he goes to a school physically um, four hours every morning with his friends. And it's a mixed age situation. There's oh. three until nine years old. And there's two. Interesting. Divided up into two Is there groups. a lot of food served during that period or does he mostly eat at they home? They serve fruit actually Fruit. So oh, we we're nice. bringing our own food um and then that was getting to be a problem because some kids were bringing chips and stuff from the tiendas from the corner stores and sharing so now they just serve fruit we trade off the parents bring fruit on a different day oh, but wonderful. Out they're just giving him a bunch of peanuts as well so but he just told me mom i'm not i'm not gonna have any more peanuts because i was talking about the fat and the peanuts and mixing with the fruit <laughs> oh my goodness wow <laughs> that's a school we'll see that's amazing. Try you should be so me. proud. Good job, mom. It's <laughs> amazing. Thanks. So wonderful. Well, I am so happy we got to like meet in person and have Thank this you, wonderful Thank conversation. You Thank you for this. And your journey is amazing. And don't sell yourself short because you know you, you should be proud of all that work. Oh, was, My God, I don't really have a story. What am I going to say when we talk? But um, it's it's helpful to to share because yes. I, it helps me realize how far I've come. And we don't I don't think we recognize those things enough. We right we look at well, how far we still have to go. But right, really, do you ever did you ever write anything down when you started? Did I keep a I journal. Have a journal inconsistently. Me too. Um, I wish yeah. I had been more consistent about it because of like, you do forget what you even had before. Once and they what go you through, what you were going through, how hard it was. Yeah. 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 So as you heal, like, they, you sort of like amnesia. You're like, Oh, well, yeah. Oh, did I have that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I really admire the people that do the before and after, like they really, they take the good pictures of, of, right. They have the foresight to do it. I think I was so brain fogged and, Brain fog was a huge one for me too. Yes. Huge and I'm still me. kind of battling it a little bit. You know, yeah. I, I, it comes and goes for me, but yeah. um, I find that that celery force supplement helps 
okay kind of clear that a little bit for me yeah so yeah i mean of course that's another thing too you know you you can get so many supplements in your regimen is like which one is helping (laughs) with Uh what you know oh really hard to know do you have any that you feel like have been you've been consistent with that have been game changers oh yeah I have, I mean, of course I was on a lot because I, again, being all like all in or nothing, you know, so, um, I still take, um, a lot of antiviral. So I take the basic seven, which is, um, vitamin C, B12, zinc, um, lysine, cat's claw, licorice, uh, nettle, and how many did I just list? <laughs> um, I think there's one more. That might've been eight, seven or eight. Okay. Anyway. Uh, oh, lemon balm. That's the one I didn't. Lemon balm. Oh, so yeah. th- for sure. And then, so that is just like the basic upkeep kind of like regimen where, you know, you're getting what you need for your immune system with the vitamin C, the zinc. Yeah. And, you know, of course, B12 is, in every single process that happens in the body. So you you can't have too much of that. You know what I mean? And then the rest are are more like antivirals to knock down those pathogens. So um, then I also take um, all like three different kinds of magnesium. I take my magnesium glycinate. I take neuromag. I take GABA. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I just got that and I haven't started it yet. It's, it's great for anything, nerve pain or like anxiety, all of that, like yeah. is it's, it helps a lot. Yeah. I take a lot of that at night. Um, yeah. okay. I also I take California that. poppy because okay. that's, it, it's like a anti shingle, you know, like bat, um, like fighter. And then right. it also relaxes you. I need like, cause my nervous system was all out of whack like I needed to calm it down Uh I also take ashwagandha for my um, adrenal glands okay um I take EPA DHA for the myelin sheath on my nerves because um that helps restore that yeah I take curcumin which again everything just sort of calmed you know calm things down yeah um what else oh uh, glutathione, not an ALA. Um, what else? That's a pretty long list already right there. Yeah, so yeah. how about you? What about supplements for you? So I've been inconsistent, but I more consistent than anything with, um, vitamin C and zinc and B12. Mm-hmm. I, I took lemon balm a lot in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, I think really helped regulate my mood, my depression, my anxiety. I agree. That's a, um, it's such a gentle yeah. one too. It's very gentle yeah. and subtle, but it's calming. It just calms exactly. you down. Yeah. Um, I, but because I live in Guatemala, so there's no, um, there's no mail that we can get um, or ship out. It's, it's not s- simple. There's no base, like good government mail. It's um, DHL. Um, and it's super expensive. So whenever, if my husband goes to the States or somebody's coming to visit, I have them bring me supplements. Oh, um, wonderful. Because I can't get them here. I get wondered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not the good brands. Like there's a health food store in town and they have some things and I can get some herbs, dried herbs in bulk and things like that, but not my, not the Vimergy. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm out of the micro C my husband comes home in two months, so I'll get it. Right. And um, so oh, there's you some, eat so yeah. much fruit. I mean, luckily you, you got tons of fruit. fruit. Right. I try to make up for these things in the um, in the greens and the fruit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the the usually though micro C and um, zinc and lemon balm have been staples for me. And then I've experimented with some of the others, nettle and. Um, I'm spacing out right now, but yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like, if I'm not looking at the bottles. (laughs) Imagining the table where I have these. Yeah. 
Yeah. Same here, same here. Yeah, but well, really staying off eggs and dairy, I think was for me the biggest thing, the biggest, yeah. and being on the celery juice. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Well, thank, thank you so you much. Time. I mean, I could literally talk to you for like five I hours, <laughs> but I guess probably for our viewing public, maybe we should keep it succinct. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I can't wait to, we'll keep in touch and, you know, like, yeah, really great to talk to you. It's so wonderful to have a, a new friend. friend.